Mm bop tabletop Kickstarter unbox. Mm bop tabletop super show super show. Hey everybody, I'm Stevie Ray, and this is the Tabletop Super Show. So today, I have the pleasure of uh, doing a full unboxing of the Wave 2 Duncan Rhodes Two Thin Coats Kickstarter, which I have right here. So, let's get into it. So it came in a foam case, kind of a little bit smaller than the last Kickstarter. One of the extras they gave us was this cool little brush holder. Holds, I think, 9 or uh, 12 brushes, something like that pretty neat. This is from Sarissa Precision. Now if you guys stick around at the end, end of this, I'm going to show you if you purchased one of the Two Thin Coats racks from uh, Sarissa Precision, I'm going to show you guys uh, something quick you can do uh, as a very slight improvement to it, to an, uh, what is a really awesome rack. So let's take a look. I haven't even opened this. So you've got box, box top. This is slightly smaller than the last one, which is good doesn't take up as much space. Okay, so we got Duncan Rhodes sticker, pretty neat. We got, uh, oh I got an extra Wave 1 reference card, which is cool. We got a second sticker here. Oh cool. Little pug sticker here. We got the paint reference card for the Wave 2. Very neat. And they also sent us, uh, ooh, they sent a full paint conversion chart that includes all of the new uh, paints. Oh, that's, that's pretty awesome. And they sent us a pretty cool print of, uh, I believe that's supposed to be Sir Coates. And that's, a, that's neat. That's frameable. Now, uh, as far as miniatures go, they did not provide as many miniatures as the last Kickstarter, but they did give us a couple resin prints, which look pretty cool. We got like a sci-fi uh, Sir Coates here, and then they also gave us uh, a gizmo, sci-fi gizmo. It looks like he has a jump pack on him. That's pretty neat. So the paints. These contain brights and glazes, which was something that wasn't in the initial run, and it has some much brighter colors, and it is complementary to... Uh, proxy for the Citadel range and with both of these waves you pretty much have a majority of some of the best uh, styles of paint that Citadel produce except for now you got them in a bottle form and from what I've noticed uh, the Duncan Rhodes paint seem to be very close to Citadel as far as pigment and color wise and have a little bit more uh, working time in them because they have a slightly more retarder in them. They thin beautifully and at the end of this, after this, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a couple of the models that I painted using only the Wave 1. Uh, we'll, we'll put those under the macro lens. And uh, I'll give you guys my impressions after having used these paints for about eight months about uh, what I think about them. I'm actually pretty excited to be messing with some of these uh, glazes. Like this is one of the glazes. Ooh, they're thin. Orange glaze here. We got some of their, the, what they call the brights. Ooh, look how bright that, uh, that uh, very bright yellow. Yeah, the brights are going to be great for your uh, final highlights for stuff. So, next part, what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put this into macro. We're going to take a look at a couple models I used using only the Two Thin Coats paints from the Wave 1. So this is a metal sculpt that I painted using only the Two Thin Coats paints. Um, really have enjoyed using the metallic paints quite a bit with this, uh, the Wave 1 set. And uh, this is uh, done entirely with those paints and were uh, really good to use. They had good flow, good coverage. Um, they're very closely matched to their Citadel counterparts and uh, were generally a joy to use. This guy was a fun paint job for sure. Now for the other one that I used that was only two thin coats, this is a catapult from the Battletech uh, starter set, the Game of Armor Combat. And uh, I even was able to pull off some freehand with this guy, did some checkerboarding and stuff. And this was done mostly with the uh, blacks, reds, whites, and yellows from the two thin coats Kickstarter. Um, I highly recommend these paints. They have really good pigmentation, good working time. Uh, the 
they, they flow well, they thin beautifully, and they actually fire out of the airbrush really well, as, uh, and that's also a boon. Take a look at both of these guys. The metallics in particular are a joy to use, so if you're at your like a friendly local game store and you see a rack of these as they're starting to pop up everywhere, I would definitely give the metallics a try because they're uh, good enough to, to give Vallejo a run for their money, which was my go-to until I uh, started using these. And I find myself more and more reaching for the Two Thin Coats uh, paints when I'm uh, doing model work because of the triad system and just because of uh, the fact that for the majority of paints, the thinning and everything is pretty consistent. So they're uh, easy to work with. So here's the Wave 1 Sarissa Precision Rack. It is a gorgeous piece of MDF. Um, let's zoom in a little bit here. Each uh, paint is labeled. The OCD within me squeals with delight at this uh, at this rack. It was pretty easy to put together. And uh, this is just the Wave 1. I have the Wave 2 right here. There's only one tiny, tiny qualm I had with this rack is I wish they had extended. These just made the rack it's a little bit farther so that you could fit the extra paints from the Kickstarter. Do I recommend this rack though? Yes, I do. And as I said I would at the beginning, I'm going to show you guys a uh, quick little hack to uh, something you can do to this rack really quickly that's going to just be a slight improvement on it. So here I got just a pair of dykes. We got the reference card here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to cut just a little bit wider than this reference card. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just a little bit longer than the uh, MDF piece. Okay, so we got this. Next, we got a couple little pieces here that look like triangles. So, we're going to cut these triangles out. The same as we did with the other one. Now, once we have these cut off, we're going to turn the rack around. I'm going to do this to both of, both of these racks too. So, let's get this beautiful rack turned to the back side. I'm okay, so here's the Sarissa Precision uh, rack right here. And what I ended up actually doing was using Gorilla Glue and blue tape to... Uh, take a piece of the MDF and just put it on the back and then what I did is there are some little triangular pieces and I actually took did the same thing with these and this is my little hack for this and this is why I did what I did is let's go ahead and turn it around I also off camera went ahead and assembled the Wave 2 rack and got all my paints on it so this is why I did this so you can do this. Bam. Now you have a you have a place for Now you have a place for all of your uh, literature. That way if you want one of the reference cards, you can just kind of pull it out. We got the conversion in wave 1 and wave 2 separately, and then I got an original conversion as well plus the full conversion chart, and they can just kind of slot there, and you can pull them out as you need them. Definitely recommend this rack if you've uh, backed the Kickstarter and you haven't purchased, picked up either of these racks. I would recommend getting them. It's part of me for not having the color parts actually glued down yet, something I am going to get to. But anyways, that's my little hack for that. So that's going to do it for this episode, guys. But if you guys got any use out of this, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And I'd really like to know if you guys are going to planning on picking up a few bottles of this at your FLGS, or if you back the Kickstarter and what your impressions of this paint are. 
generally, I'm really enjoying these paints and uh, looking forward to what they come up with next. So until the next time, happy painting, happy gaming, and happy hobby. Bye.